on Authors Corner. Really um, pleased to welcome to the show Carol Wilson Mack. She has such a fascinating background, and she's written a really interesting book called Patchwork Conversations Between Generations. And it made me think of my favorite um, quilt where women had gotten together pieces of my grandfather's life and it was passed on in my family. And um, when he when he left the earth, I got the, the quilt and it means so much to me and represents so much. And this book is so deep. It's about those conversations the women were having from 1939 to 1959. That's the setting for the book in South Carolina. So thanks so much for, for joining us, Carol. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. What drove you to write this? Because of what you saw as a child? Yeah, from being around my grandmothers and hearing them talk to each other and seeing them interact with the other women, I thought about all of the stories that I heard them sharing, and I said, oh, this would be a good thing to share with others. And especially that time period. So when we're talking about 1939 to 1959, that was a tumultuous time, wasn't it? Oh, yes. It really was. You know, there were separations between the races. There were not good interactions. They weren't as positive as we would like them to be. So that is part of what was going on during that period. And it was and the setting is a rural setting in Bamberg, South Carolina. And if we went back to that time period, as you say, it was there was a big difference between um, the black and white issues that we're seeing now unfold today, but what was happening there. And in in your book, do you talk about those kinds of things they, that the women had to deal with? Yes, it touches on it. It touches on it. And one of the women's stories is very much involved in it. And, you know, they touch on dysfunction, sex, jealousy, and death. And one of the stories is a black and white issue. And it's, you know, it's very well defined in that area, but it's something that actually was happening during that time. You know, we are black and white, we're interacting sexually, but nobody would know it because we kept it secret, that kind of thing. One of the stories is, is about that. So, yes, it is blatantly mentioned in the patch in one of the women. Yeah, that's what I like about Patchwork, because that's what you talk about. You talk about the real conversations that were happening, and some of them were light and funny and gossipy, and some of them had serious, you know, overtones of what, what was it like? What what happened um, in a situation where you had someone who was uh, African-American dating or being with someone who was, was white, etc., because that was a no-no uh, then, certainly, and that's why that was kept secret. But this was the big outlet, because quilting they could have honest honest conversations as a child you got a chance to really witness this firsthand were you kind of underfoot listening to some of the conversations and threading the needle yes i was underfoot always listening and sometimes maybe understanding a little bit of what the elders were talking about but you know during that period as a child you were not allowed to say much. You, you just listen, you know. We we were not, they said, young people were seen but not heard. <laughs> so we didn't have much to say, but we did hear. And as I thought about doing this, I reflected on many of the stories. So I just put it together and call it yeah. actual yeah, uh, the stories that you heard while you were, again, sitting there listening to these women speaking. Did you ever think when you were sitting on that floor that you would grow up to be this fantastic screenwriter and be involved in so many uh, interesting productions, including one on Broadway called Sly Fox that is was just huge and um, got rave reviews and uh, was such an interesting piece of, of of work on Broadway, which now sadly is closed down. Did you think that that was was something that was going to happen to you? 
Yeah, okay. I could never have imagined that. <laughs> I could never have imagined that. Bamberg is a very small town. It's probably about 3,000 people. And, you know, our family was poor. We had very little. So you couldn't think beyond what you're, you know, surrounded in. I definitely couldn't think of Sly Fox, but when I read that play, I loved it so much, and I said, God, I would love to do this play, and I said, got the opportunity to do it for Dad was preparing to do it here in Linford, and it was supposed to go on stage in May, but because of the virus, we were not able to do the performance. Yeah, wow. That's, I mean, just, again, just amazing some of the places that you, you've been taken with your own work. And I can imagine what the women doing patchwork if they were talking today would be talking about. There's Carol Wilson Mack. Look what happened. Boy, she went up to uh, New York City and then she was there in Newark and she had these plays. Who is it? Because people, cur- curious minds would want to know this because when you ever have brushes with fame or you're in that kind of industry, People want to know more about that. Who Who's the, I, I, don't, I don't want to say famous, but I guess it could be famous. Who's the most famous actor or, um, I guess, celebrity that you work with? Oh, I haven't. Oh, there's a lot of, uh, is Alan Craig Harris? He's an actor and he's. Yep. And Ben Rowe, they're, oh, they're just amazing. They were the leads. And Sly Fox, and they actually traveled here to do the Memphis production uh, with me. A lot of people may not have heard of those names, but they're great, great actors. They're great, great actors. I've heard those names. Look them up, and you certainly uh, know that they're great actors. What do you want people to take away from picking up your book and reading Patchwork Conversations Between Generations? I would like them to be involved in interacting with each other, not not just the people from your own generation, but elders and youth interacting and allowing the youth to say, because they, too, have something to say. Like I say, we're going to be forced to listen to the, the youth because they have to see the technology because some of us are having difficulty learning the technology. Yeah, so, boy, isn't that true? That's true, right? To learn technology, go to the younger younger people. Yeah. So wow. now we're going to have to listen to them and hopefully yep. they'll listen to us. Absolutely. So quilters out there, pay attention because you and I had this conversation off the air. I do think quilting, if is not a lost art. I think there are people that are still quilting and that's a good thing to pass down to generations. It'd be sad to see that lost because there was something about that circle and how rich it was. Those, those conversations, there's no question about it was, um, once you put this all together, was it, was it exciting for you to see it come alive? Uh, I think a book, you sort of give birth to a book. Did it feel like that? Oh yes. I was very happy because you get to a point when you're bringing when you're bringing a group of women together, these characters, when they come together, you you often don't know how they will interact with each other. And each of the women's stories were so different. I I was, at some point, I was, how, how will they resolve? And then one of the women was having such a difficult time, and she disappeared from the story. No one knew where she was. But somehow, they pulled it together. It's like the characters told me how the story would end. I know that sounds strange, but why does you understand that? The characters take a life of their own, and they say to the writer how they want the story. I like that. It's a perfect place to end this. That means you have a good piece of work when you take a story and the characters, you want to see what happens to them, you watch them, you're you're seeing their journey and then you're actually putting it out there for people to 
to be able to to read patchwork conversations between generations boy let's keep having those conversations and you can pick it up on amazon carol wilson mack thank you so much thank you kate thank you so much for having me and thanks to all of you for listening to this version of the show Thank you.